This is the deep dive into debugging your PowerShell scripts. My name is Tyler, that's me, on top of the Space Needle, in case you were wondering, uh, back in Seattle. I'm a software engineer on the PowerShell team at Microsoft. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's just my name. Uh, it's also my username on Twitch. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I do a bunch of live streaming, uh, live coding, and, and stuff like that on Twitch. So if you're interested in that stuff, uh, feel free to talk to me afterwards. Uh, or check the session that we did earlier this week, and that's also my username for that. All right, so this session. What do you think? Thoughts? It can even go backwards, too. That's nice. That's a default PowerPoint transition, too. I had to do nothing to get that. All right. <laughs> So this session is uh, mainly about two big things. The first how-to is how to be immediately effective with debugging PowerShell scripts in VS Code. And then the other thing that we want to do is, uh, is learn how to customize the PowerShell debugger for all of your needs. <clears throat> so this is Joey. And he's quite sad because he keeps hearing about VS Code debugging but he doesn't know where to get started. And, it, and uh, if you're like Joey, please, let's, let's see a show of hands. I see a few. Oh, well, okay. All right, well, you're in the right spot because that's what this is all about. We will be uh, first diving into the zero config, zero setup debugging. This is literally right after you install the PowerShell extension. Uh, we'll take a look at the debug pane and what it can do. We'll look at uh, pester, uh, socket, and invoke build debugging. We'll dissect the uh, launch.json, which we'll see later. It's the debug configuration. We'll look at remote development uh, and what that means in terms of debugging. And then we'll also be talking about how to debug C sharp commandlets for those of you that have written C sharp commandlets. All right. So. I'm not going to spend too, uh, too much time in slides. We're just going to hop into uh, the first demo here, which is zero config, zero setup debugging, and a look at the de debug pane, all right? So <clears throat> let me go ahead and open up VS Code to my, uh, <clears throat> to my example script that I have here. And let me change the theme because, uh, ooh, new version, nice. Uh, <laughs> it happens every day and I get so excited about it. Uh, <laughs> all right, switch over to the ISC theme so you can all see. All right, here's what my, uh, here's what my awesome script does. It calls out to this API called, uh, catfacts.ninja, catfact.ninja, and it returns a, uh, a random cat fact. Uh, it's a very simple script. It takes in a single parameter if you want. We've got our function get cat fact, and then it just does some some write hosts and and calls the function. So with uh, with zero work here, all I have is just this folder open in VS Code, and and my uh, debugging.ps1 script. I can uh, I can go ahead and place a breakpoint on like this line here, and if I hit F5, we'll see that it just breaks and it stops right where I had that breakpoint. Very simple, no configuration required. You can do this. Sorry? Oh yeah, sorry. How's that? Is that better? Uh, all you need is the PowerShell extension in order to get this. And uh, if you don't know uh, how to get the PowerShell extension, uh, you can head on over to the extensions pane, search for PowerShell here, and grab it. There's a PowerShell one and a PowerShell preview, which is like all of our new features coming soon. So uh, try out the preview if you'd like, uh, and that's how to get that. I also did a talk at PowerShell Summit on uh, uh, like getting started with Visual Studio Code. So uh, go check out that talk. A link will be at the end of the at the end of this talk on where to go see that. Anyway, so the first thing I want to talk about is this thing, this little bar up here. If you can see it, it's got uh, six buttons on there. The first one here is continue, and if you hit continue, it's just going to, as the name implies, continue executing the script until it reaches yet another breakpoint. Uh, step over, we'll step over to the next line 
that uh, that is in your script. So, for example, we'll step over and we see that it's now arrived. The, the debugger has now arrived at get cat fact. Okay. The next button is step into, and what this will do is this will actually step into the thing that it's currently looking at. So this is a function, so it's going to step into the function, the debugger. Run that. And now we're inside of the function. Uh, we can go ahead and hit continue a few, uh, or step over a few times if we'd like. Uh, and then we have step out, which will step out of the function or whatever that we're currently in. Uh, and we'll end up down here at right host. Naturally, uh, restart and stop are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, <clears throat> and we'll just stop the execution at that point. This is pretty much all you need to know to be immediately effective in debugging. Uh, these features that I just showed you are about 80% of the stuff that I personally use. Um, just setting breakpoints here and stepping through. The next thing you want to do is, uh, is probably get an idea for, for what's going on at the, uh, at the moment that you've, br uh, you've broken. So let me run this again and we'll kind of get a, gl a glimpse for what, what's going on there. So I'll set a breakpoint here at this, uh, at this URL, at this variable. Uh, and I will go ahead and hit continue, which will run until it hits that breakpoint. So at this point, uh, I have a prompt at the bottom here in my integrated console and I can actually do, uh, I, I can actually interact with the, the PowerShell session at that breakpoint. So I could type URL here, uh, and it's not defined. But then once I step over this line and type URL here, uh, we see that it does in fact have catfact.ninja slash fact. So that's a really easy way to see kind of the state of your, uh, your, um, your session. In addition to using the terminal below, you can use what, what is called the debug pane, which is what is showing up here on the left side of the screen. Uh, and you'll notice here, I already have one entry under auto here, which is the dollar URL variable, and also what is defined there. Uh, and so we can actually like go in here and, and change it. So I like, I can add an additional slash if I want. And then if I like step over really quick, do URL again, we see that it now has the slash. So I can like mutate the, the state if I want. If I need to like debug a certain scenario, uh, you can very easily do that using this variable section. <clears throat> Let me go ahead and collapse that. The watch section is pretty cool because it allows you to, to, as the name implies, watch when certain things kind of happen. So as an example, let me go ahead and say that I want to watch for when uh, URL equals, uh, and you can actually put like PowerShell expressions here. So dollar URL equals HTTPS <clears throat> colon slash slash cat fact dot ninja uh, slash fact. Close that. And uh, I added that other slash right. So, uh, and if I expand this here, we see that it's set to true, which is very nice. Uh, and actually, what I, what's really cool about this is that I could change it up here in the variables pane, and it will automatically change the watch uh, as well. And so uh, this is really helpful if you're messing with a bunch of data and you just want to see some like some visual checks of like what certain values are uh, that you would want to compute. It also lets you, since it runs like just pretty much any sort of script block in that expression, we could do something like, you know, if, uh, here, let's edit this one. If URL equals this, then uh, write host psconf eu, like that. Uh, and, and we see that since in fact, this has the, this has that slash in there. We end up getting psconf eu. And if I change this to, uh, this, nothing happens. But then once I change this back, uh, it, it in fact logs this. So this is, this is one way to like, uh, uh, for those of you that are familiar with the VS Code feature of, uh, log points, this is kind of a way to do that in, in terms of, uh, setting up some things to watch for and then logging it to the to the console when that when that type of thing happens. 
This is definitely a more like uh, advanced scenario, but it, it just kind of shows the, the the power of the of the watch section. Uh, how often is the question was how often is it evaluated? What is it? Uh, the watch is uh, evaluated when variables change. Uh, so you can trigger a variable change by either changing it here, uh, or if you were to like step uh, over or, or do something like that, the variables would change and therefore the watch would get fired again. It's a good question. <clears throat> the next thing is the call stack here, and we can see that I already have a, a call stack of, of, of get cat fact on the call stack, and for those of you that the call stack is just like the, the ordering of functions or, or whatever uh, that is uh, currently being called. So since I'm currently within the get cat fact function, that is at the top of my call stack, uh, or at the top of my call stack, and then the thing below here, the script block is in fact the whole uh, the whole script itself. And I can actually see here that when I click on that part of the call stack, it can point me immediately to where uh, where in the call stack or where in the script uh, it's currently waiting at that given part in the call stack <clears throat> and then the last thing is uh, kind of a uh, more verbose representation of what we see over here in the gutter except that it can do something that I find really really interesting and that you can add what's called a function breakpoint now, let's say that I don't have any, any breakpoints here, and I'm just gonna like continue to finish the script here. Um, let's say that I wanna break once get cat fact gets called. And you can easily do this by just adding a new breakpoint and doing get cat fact, just like this. And so when you run the script again, it will break once get cat fact is called. So if you wanted to check any time like a certain function is called and, and check some sort of state, uh, you can go ahead and do that this way instead of, uh, instead of placing a breakpoint here, for example. Uh, they're, they're equivalent, but uh, this is kind of more explicit, which is kind of nice. Uh, I did uh, forget to mention, though, in the variables section over here, we saw that uh, that URL showed up in this auto section. But there's also like these other sections, if I minimize these other ones here, uh, there's also like globally scoped variables. So an example is like, all right, well we know dollar home as an, as an example is, is equal to this. And we could see that uh, all throughout here as well. Oh, this one's kind of cool. Is Linux, is Mac, is Windows. So, uh, <clears throat> There's tons of power here in terms of like really getting a sense for the state that you're uh, that you're currently in uh, when you debug your your scripts and your modules. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the slides, and and what we're going to start gearing towards now is kind of how you can customize uh, the debugger to do different kinds of scenarios. Are there any questions so far? I don't want to take too many, but yeah. Just a quick question concerning the um, function breakpoints. Do they um, have a So I need my heroes, say, um, talk on right host, and you know the one that has right host in internally, and you can talk into um, that module when you call it one function. So does it propagate down? So, I think the question is what happens when uh, functions get like overwritten and okay so this is a, a f your question is can the debugger uh, stop at functions that are internal to a module that are not exposed. Um, the answer to that is uh, probably, um, <laughs> but I haven't tried it out myself. <laughs> 
All of this uses the PowerShell debugger uh, today. So really, if the PowerShell debugger can do it, and I'm pretty sure that I could do something like that, uh, then it, it should just work. But uh, if, you're, if you want, we can check it out uh, after, the, after the talk. OK. <clears throat> so the next thing that we're going to look at is uh, a demo on debugging pester tests. Now, who here uses pester at all? It's a lot of hands. Awesome. So uh, this is a demo-ish, because it's actually my only recording that I have in this talk. Uh, and it's essentially how you would debug a, uh, a pester script. So here you could see, let's see if this works. No? OK. Oh, there we go. Sweet. So here we could see that there's these little like run test, debug test things that, uh, that appear above the describe block, right? So uh, one of the features that we have in the, in the PowerShell extension is the ability to detect these describe blocks uh, and then run them uh, and debug them with just like the click of a button. So let's see, there we go. So in this example, I'm just going to run the tests, and we see the output uh, appear down in the integrated console. And over here, I place a breakpoint, hit debug tests, and then boom, it stops right at that breakpoint. So uh, I don't know. I personally use this feature quite a, quite a lot when I'm writing pester tests. Uh, so um, you know, I, I hope that's something that uh, you can find value in. And that's, that just comes pre-baked in the PowerShell extension. Uh, the only thing you need is pester. All right. The next thing is uh, sake and invoke build. Now, these are probably not as, as widely used as pester, but does anybody use sake or invoke build in their scripts? OK, there's a, a, good, a good amount of you. So um, one of the things that I did when I was really uh, procrastinating my talk at PowerShell Summit uh, was that I, I wrote this module and I threw it on the gallery. And what it allows, uh, what it does is it exposes this feature in the extension, this extensibility in the extension that allows those same kind of code lenses that we saw in Pester appear for, for anything really. So, uh, let me just stop the debugger here. So I have this very, very basic, uh, invoke build script. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it's kind of this like this way to define different tasks that you would do in like a build script or deploy script. So I have here, I have a task that's build. It just says I'm building. And then I have a task deploy. And then it depends on the build task. And then also it uh, runs its own script block. So today, there's no sort of like uh, code lens, as you can see. But I published a mo module in the gallery. And all you have to do is install it. Uh, and then import it, build tools, build runner, VS Code tools is the name of the module. Uh, and you can even just add this import module to your, uh, your profile. And if I just do a quick space there, the code lens just appear, which is really, really quite nice. So from there, I can just like hit run task um, and, oh, sad, the, Rocket ship doesn't render. Oh well. Uh, or I can debug the tasks if I want to, <clears throat> just as I would anything else. So for this, all you have to do is install that module that I threw on the gallery, uh, and then make sure it's imported to to get these little code lenses. Again, without any sort of configuration to the debugger. The whole point is to is to try to keep that that. Uh, the configuration is little to little to none as possible. All right. So now at this point we are going to shift focus and look at how uh, how we can customize the PowerShell debugger in VS Code to do different things, and we do that by dissecting the launch.json file. Now, the launch.json file exists under a directory called .vs Code. And this is typically created within the, the workspace or within the folder that you've opened in VS Code. So, yep, sits in the VS Code folder on the root of your workspace. Uh, and it contains an array of launch configs that control the behavior of the debugger. 
And here's what one looks like. Now, important things to take away from this uh, is the request property, uh, which could either be launch or attach. And then the type property, which must be PowerShell if you want to use the PowerShell debugger. Pretty much everything else is optional, uh, but we're going to dissect uh, both the different kinds of launch configs and the attach config uh, to get a sense for that. I uh, see a couple people taking pictures, so I try to pause for a brief moment. All right, so launch and attach, what do they mean? Launch is saying, basically, run something in the current PowerShell integrated console or start a new PowerShell uh, integrated console and then run something in that. So that would be like, I've got a script that I'm looking at and I want to run that script. Um, that's a launch. Attach, on the other hand, is I have this PowerShell session that's running somewhere and I want to attach to that and debug something that's running. Uh, and we'll look at that in, in a moment. Going back to the launch requests, um, we'll go through how to, how to actually get that launch.json file, but when you do get it, VS Code actually supplies a whole bunch of IntelliSense on all the different, uh, all the different options, and all the options have, like, this little, uh, dialogue to the right of it that explain what it does. The important ones here in the launch one, I think are, are args, which is gonna be what gets passed down to the, uh, to the command that you're running. So like, let's say I have a script that has some parameters in it. Args would be used to pass certain uh, parameters to that script. Um, other ones that are interesting, the pre-launch task is pretty nice if you wanna run something before you wanna actually debug the script that you're currently looking at. That's kind of nice. And then there's also the create temporary integrated console if you wanna start in a fresh session. <clears throat> Yeah, and a, and a whole bunch of other options as well. And then there's the attach request. And the, the attach request, like I said before, is the idea of, of attaching to a PowerShell session that already exists somewhere in the world and, uh, and debugging something within it. So up at the top, you have computer name. If it's like a, a computer name on, on your network somewhere, you can, it will first enter PS session into that machine. Um, then like, down at the bottom, you'll see like process ID, and that will be the process ID of the PowerShell instance that you want to attach to. And then run space ID if that process has multiple PowerShell run spaces within it and you want to specifically attach to a certain run space ID. Um, you might notice there's, there are some common, uh, settings that are just available in all launch configs, like the Linux, OS X, and Windows ones. Um, and what you could do there is, is basically set uh, any of these other things per uh, operating system, which is kind of nice. Gives you more flexibility. All right, so what we are going to do is we're just going to run through all the different uh, built-in launch.json templates uh, and, and go through them and see what they do. <clears throat> Has anybody learned something yet? No one raises their <laughs> Awesome. All right, so to, to get started with that, uh, if I expand this debug pane a little bit, you'll see that there's this like drop down, uh, and it says no configurations, which is sad. If you click add configurations, it's going to go ahead and create that launch.json file. And if we go back to the, the explorer pane here, we'll see that it created that .vs code and that launch.json file for us in our current workspace. So from here, it actually creates, let me close this for now, uh, it creates just a ton of configurations. Uh, these are all the built-in ones to the PowerShell extension, but uh, let's just delete them all, and we'll start from, start from scratch here. So um, what you could do is just start typing PowerShell, and you'll get the snippets of all the different ones that the PowerShell uh, extension exposes. So for example, launch current file, if I uh, complete that, it just gives me that, that, uh, that config. And this one's actually very similar. This is actually basically the default behavior that the extension does today. Uh, so this particular configuration isn't, isn't all that useful, but just so you get a sense for, for 
uh, what it's like. We can see that it has a name. Uh, the script uh, is going to be the file that we're currently looking at. This is like some magical VS Code syntax that means like basically the script that I'm currently looking at on my screen. Uh, and then the, the CWD is at what like folder that is going to be, what folder the debugger is going to be launched from. And you can specify file here and it will just say, uh, okay, I want to launch this from the folder that this particular file is, uh, is in. So, uh, we shouldn't see anything different, but we can go ahead and hit this play button or we can hit F5. Uh, and it will do pretty much what we expect it to. Oh, I think I still have that, uh, yeah, the, get the function breakpoint still available. So, like I said, this one's pretty much the default behavior, so we don't need to dive into it too deep, but it does <clears throat> exactly what we saw before. So, the next thing we can look at is, uh, let's see. Let's look at the this one. Launch current file with uh, with args. If I hover over this, will it show it? Okay, well, uh, launch current file with args prompt. Now this one uh, shows a demo of the, the ability to pass in arguments to your script. So, so here we're defining these args. And here's a little bit more VS Code magic here uh, that says, all right, command, the command that I want to run is specify script args. And what this is going to do is going to give me a prompt within VS Code where I can add any arguments that I want to add. So let's take a look at what that means. Thankfully, this, this script that I wrote has this fact link. <clears throat> so what we can do is we'll place a breakpoint here and make sure the launch file with args prompt is selected. Press the button, and uh, and we get a little dialog box here. So I'm going to go ahead and add fact length of 100. <clears throat> and uh, if we see over here in the variables table, we should see fact length of 100. There it is. Yeah. So we see fact length of 100. So. Uh, this is really cool if you have uh, scripts that you, you'd like to debug, but, uh, you know, they require a bunch of parameters to, to input them. <clears throat> so that one's kind of nice. Uh, let me go ahead and continue through the rest of that. Cats live with soldiers and trenches. They killed mice during World War II. Huh, fun fact. Cat fact. Uh, <laughs> All right, so the next one. So we'll type PowerShell here. So let's talk about the interactive session one. So this one is intended to launch the debugger and have it just be constantly listening for when a breakpoint gets hit. So let me go ahead and save that. Now I'm setting current working directory to nothing. And what this is going to do is say, don't bother changing the current working directory. Um, leave it, leave it the way it is. <clears throat> so as an example of this config, we could select uh, PowerShell Interactive Session, hit F5 or play, and you'll notice nothing happens. And that's kind of intentionally, because we just want this to be sitting there waiting for something to happen. And what is that something? Well, uh, it's me running this script that we're looking at. So if I do, if I run this script in the console now, cat fact length 100, now it's going to hit that breakpoint. So um, this is really nice because uh, it's great if you want to put in your parameters via the, via the terminal. But it's also nice because uh, this is great if you're working on a module and you need to import the module and then run a certain function within that. That way you always have the debugger waiting, listening, uh, and you're able to debug those functions uh, within your module that way. <clears throat> so that's an, a nice way to, to debug modules. What else is there? Oh, typo. <laughs> 
Ooh. This is a great opportunity to tell you how to submit a bug report in the extension. So I'm using the preview extension, and what you're seeing here is an issue with, uh, with PS Readline, which is one of the flagship features of, of the preview extension. Um, the way you submit a bug report here is opening up the command palette, like so, which is Control Shift P, or I think it's also F1, typing bug, and then hitting upload bug report to GitHub. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna open your browser with a bunch of, uh, with a bunch of stuff like PowerShell information, extensions that you have installed, uh, and all the good stuff. So, uh, so that we can better help you in, in, in debugging the, the, the issue. And then the only thing you have to do at this point is just give us a little bit of a description of what happened here, and then uh, upload the logs, which if we go back to VS Code, there's a <clears throat> open PowerShell extension logs folder, like that. Uh, and at this point we can grab these logs uh, copy, where is it? Reveal and explore. That's what I was looking for. Uh, zip these up. <clears throat> or actually, I think we just copy these and paste them right into here. Ah. Anyway, I will do this later, but you get the idea. <laughs> True. Good idea. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> Good. So I'll finish the details of that later, but you get the idea. Very easy to submit uh, issues. <clears throat> All right, let's get back to our demo. I'm gonna reload the extension, which is using PowerShell restart current session and we're back on track. Where were we? <clears throat> Interactive session, so we went through that one. What else do we have? Ah, yes. An example of the attach request. So this one is PowerShell attached to host process. And what this is going to do is give us the ability to uh, attach to any uh, PowerShell process that is currently running. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my PowerShell uh, instance running here, grab its PID. So it's 14468. <clears throat> we'll sec select PowerShell attached to host process and run it. And what this is gonna do is tell you all the different PowerShell instances that are running your machine. And we know it's 14468, so we'll select that one. And at this point, we're actually debugging that other run space. <clears throat> now. Uh, so you can put, uh, so the question was, can you use someone else's credentials for that? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I'll have to get back to you on that one. You could specify computer name, but, uh, that doesn't necessarily, uh, imply credentials. Yeah. Oh, as admin, yeah? Yeah, you could do it as admin, uh, but, but yeah. I'm not sure if uh, supplying credentials is a part of the config, and if it's not, it should be, so potentially should be. Uh, so uh, let's talk about that afterwards and we can open a feature request for something like that. Potentially an argument, yeah. <clears throat> All right, so uh, at this point, we're uh, attached to this other session. Now there's one weird thing that's going to happen. When I hit enter here, the debugger breaks. 
And this is because of a feature within the PowerShell debugger called break all, which is I'm going to break as soon as possible. Um, and the way this was done, or the reason why this was done, is to streamline the debugging experience in the console. So imagine you're like at the console and you're trying to debug. Uh, I don't know if, if many of you have used the debugging commandlets that are available in PowerShell, but the idea is you wouldn't be able to set your breakpoints until you've actually attached to that other session. So the break all is there to break as soon as possible so that you can set up all your breakpoints uh, at that point. All you have to do in the VS Code extension though is just continue because it's not very important. And so uh, at this point, <clears throat> we have our, uh, our breakpoint here. We can go ahead and run that uh, debugging script here. <clears throat> and we see that it has stopped at a breakpoint. <clears throat> but the question is, what breakpoint has it stopped at? Hmm. Sorry? <clears throat> yeah, what is the L, thank you. Okay. So it's at this, this point. Uh, there seems to be an issue with VS Code actually rendering that. I'm gonna take a quick, uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna do a quick blame on the fact that I'm running VS Code Insiders instead of the stable version, uh, but we could continue uh, <clears throat> as planned. At this point, I can go ahead and run like $PID, and I see that it, the PID is actually 14468, which is what it was over here. And that's just to, to prove that I'm in fact attached to this other process and I'm debugging that run space one that was set in the original launch config here. <clears throat> and so from here, if you wanted to like specify other things, you could specify the computer name. Uh, <clears throat> in 6.2, there's this ability to specify a custom pipe name. Uh, but if you're not too familiar with that, don't worry about it. Uh, and process ID, run space name, et cetera. <clears throat> okay, so those are all the default configs that that ship in the in the extension. So let me go ahead and quit out of this. <clears throat> okay. So back at the slides, <clears throat> the next thing that I want to talk about is. Uh, Remote development. Now, there's a current experience and a future experience. The current experience is built into the PowerShell extension. The future experience is, uh, is using the new VS Code remote development extension. <clears throat> the current remote development experience, uh, as I mentioned, is built into the PowerShell extension and it leverages PowerShell remoting uh, via enter PS session. It also works cross-platform. So the idea here is that you run EnterPS session inside of the integrated console, which then connects to some other uh, machine or, or even locally. And then at that point, the PowerShell extension is able to, uh, it, it, sorry, it exposes a, a command called psedit or open editor file. And you're able to open up the files that are in that remote session right in front of you as if they were local files on your machine. It's nice, but this is nicer. <laughs> the future remote development experience. Uh, VS Code about uh, a few months ago released a feature called, uh, uh, released a new extension called remote development. Uh, and what it allows is a few different things. One, it supports remoting over SSH. So the way it works is that you have this other machine uh, and it's going to use SSH to uh, communicate back and forth between a process that runs in the remote machine uh, to essentially emulate this idea that you're, that you're opening up the files on your local machine. However, they are all uh, on the remote machine. <clears throat> it also supports stuff like containers and WSL, which is really, really cool. For those of you that were here at the keynote, uh, 
Joey gave a, a demo of, of the WSL support, and I will show you a demo of the Docker containers. <clears throat> okay. So, if you want the remote development extension, all you have to do is search for remote development in the store here. Uh, and if you grab this one, this is the pack that contains all of the different extensions, containers, SSH, WSL. We're going to be looking at the containers one today, but I've also installed the pack just because I, uh, I use a few of them quite a bit. So I've got my, uh, my scripts here. And what I want to do is I want to run them in a, uh, in a Ubuntu container. And in order to do that, all I have to do is click on this little button that becomes available when you uh, install the remote uh, development extension. And then click this uh, remote containers reopened folder in container. <clears throat> From here, you could search for a particular container that you want to use. Uh, right now, there's PowerShell, which, uh, which uses the official PowerShell uh, Ubuntu container. And what this is going to do is uh, it's going to spin up the container. It's going to install the, the, other, the process that VS Code uses to communicate uh, on the container. And then once that's done, we'll be able to see uh, all of our files as if they were local on our machine, uh, but they're actually all living within the container. And the VS Code team has done this in a seamless way where all, basically all the extensions that you could ever use uh, anyway would just work the same as they would in, uh, <clears throat> uh, as if they were local on your machine. So for example, I'll open up my debugging PS1 script here. And we'll see that the, uh, the integrated pon console pops up just as it would uh, locally. And to verify that this is, in fact, not what you think it is, I can run PS version table and see that I'm running on Linux within that Docker container. And I could still debug just as I would before by hitting F5 <clears throat> and, and all the debug fun stuff, right? This is super useful if you want to verify that your scripts are cross-platform. Just as you would uh, if you wanted to use WSL, you could use, uh, use this as well. And this one's also supported on, on Mac uh, and, and on Linux. So, um, so if you were not running on Windows, so you don't have WSL, you could do it that way as well. Yeah? Correct. So the PowerShell extension is actually running within the container as well, which is how it has access to, to the file system and, and all that stuff. So what if you already have the integrated terminal started? Because what, when, how does it switch over? Uh, so the question was, how does it switch over from uh, local to, to remote? And the idea is that a, a folder can only really be open in local or remote. And so at this point, what I could do is, click on this and say, okay, reopen folder locally, and that would switch this current window back to locally on, on Windows versus within the container. Okay, I'm running low on time. The last thing I want to show you is debugging C-sharp commandlets. All you have to do for that is, uh, let's see, okay, there we go. Awesome. So I got my awesome C-sharp commandlet. All you need for this is the C-sharp extension. Because for this, we're actually debugging C-sharp code, right? So you install the C-sharp extension, and uh, you have your, your commandlet here. And then what you could do is pop them in the debug pane. Uh, and I've actually already got it here, but you can add a configuration for uh, net core. And you want something like this, attached to local, uh, uh, .NET Core attached to local process. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this launch config 
to uh, attach to the PowerShell process that has our, our binary module loaded into it. Okay? So um, I've already built this, so this is ready to go. Uh, I need to run PowerShell here. <laughs> Let me import this. Beam. Okay, and this gets me uh, the uh, get command. <clears throat> Test sample commandlet. So before I run this, I'll hop over to this, to the to VS Code, run it, and I'm going to attach to the PowerShell process. Uh, I should probably get the PID before I run this. 18248. 18248. All right. Attach. I'm like... Sample. I forgot to set a breakpoint. We'll set one here. My hourglass has run low. <laughs> Favorite number. This is just imports. And boom, debugging. So there, we're actually debugging my uh, very basic, but uh, debugging this sample commandlet. And all it takes is the C sharp extension and just attaching to the PowerShell process that you want to debug. Okay. <clears throat> right, so we're using the C-sharp extension, attach it to the PowerShell process you want to uh, run your command lid in, and uh, as a bonus, you should check out Thomas Rayner's talk from PowerShell Summit. Uh, he did an awesome talk on writing C-sharp commandlets if you're curious about that. I already did the demo, and that's pretty much it. Now time for the summary slides, since my hourglass is empty. So, we did a bunch in this talk, but we did. Uh, how to get started with debugging in PowerShell scripts and VS Code, how to debug pester tests and socky and invoke build tasks, how to configure the debugger for advanced use cases, how to do remote editing and debugging, how to debug C-sharp commandlets. Lots of stuff. One last slide. It's the big slide of links that you all probably want to take a picture of. Um, there are relevant talks on, from PowerShell Summit, including uh, Thomas's that I mentioned before, and also my talk using VS Code as your uh, default PowerShell editor. <clears throat> There's also PowerShell VS Code docs, and then links to all the different extensions that I talked about in this, uh, in this talk. Thank you all for staying a few minutes extra, and uh, I hope you got something out of this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>